everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide, your insider's guide to all things franchising in the local area. I'm Blake Martin, local small business franchise owner and your Heartland Franchise Guy. This is the place for advocacy, resources, and education on all things franchise ownership in the local community, and it's a great place for any entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur to stop by if they want to learn more about the franchising industry. We're lucky enough to have our guest back, R.J. Mead of Goldfish Swim School, who is a franchisee, a long-distance franchisee living in Chicago, but operating and getting ready to expand his second franchise location in Omaha, Nebraska of Goldfish Swim School. So thanks for being back with us. Thanks for having me, Blake. We're going to get into the uh, nuts and bolts of what it's like to open up a second location. So you opened up your first Goldfish Swim School location in early 2019 in Omaha. You were living in Chicago, which you were relatively specific about that door-to-door it's 464 miles. <laughs> You've done that drive a few times. You successfully grew that even though uh, you had to go through COVID a year after opening up, and now you're getting ready to expand to a second location in the southern Omaha area in Papillion. That's correct. What made you decide to open up a second location? Why? Um, well, Blake, uh, after uh, after COVID and coming out of COVID, um, the demand for swim lessons because um, people were gone or you know not in the pools for a while, right. and the demand uh, at, at my first location um, started um, blowing up, and um, I, I saw a need for um, another facility in town to support all the demand and uh so we started looking at real estate in early 2021 and we just we did open you keep saying you're about to open we did open our second (laughs) store in december um but it it was it's about an 18 to 20 month process of we're going to go ahead and do it and to finally opening so congratulations so the second location has been open for a good month now correct that's correct you had some delays, right? We're in that era that uh, even if somebody's listening to this 10 years from now, there's been some supply chain challenges, right? Uh, yep. We've been talking about the COVID era. So we want to talk a little bit about some of your real-life experiences there? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, one, the cost of construction from four-year four year difference is uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was uh, eye-opening and startling at first, but um, it, still ma- it still made sense to um, – we purchased the real estate on this one. Um, the, the first place is a leasehold improvement. Um, and yeah, no, it's, uh, went fairly smoothly. We should have opened up maybe a couple months earlier, but, uh, all things considered, we we're happy with the final product. Yeah. Congrats on that. So how, if at all has, as the franchise owner, how has your role changed, uh, going from single location owner to dual location owner. So now that you've got the second one up and going, it's a newer one, but are you finding that you're spending your time on different things than you did when you just had the one location? Well, absolutely. You got to bounce back and forth between stores and, you know, um, obviously during construction and the build up to the second store had to spend a lot of time on that, um, on that, on that store. And not now it's kind of bouncing back and forth as, as the needs of each store, um, come up or whatever so it's yeah. it's it, yeah it's a lot more driving around omaha because they're 12 <laughs> miles apart from each other and got a back and forth and all over town so um, yeah so it's and, and then obviously with um growing the brand you're you're adding a lot more labor um so we're constantly hiring here in the market and we're always looking for good talented people um reliable people that will want to work and make a uh, difference in children's lives so yeah we're probably need about 20 25 employees like you know over the next six weeks um so it's it's constant and ma- managing the growth of the um the team is uh it, it's 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 got its own challenges and t- time to sure deal with so sure how many staff members do you have in total uh if i had to guess it's over 60 between the two stores i probably could use another 20 um 25 as i said for between two stores and once they're um fully uh, um once they're fully operational f- fully operational you know i would imagine at any given time we'd have um you know 100 employees between the two stores nice yeah so it's a on- ongoing uh component of the business is recruitment and retention i would imagine yep absolutely 
What would you say um, you got better at the second time around if you compare your first opening to your second opening? What did I get better at? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, that, that's a... That's a tricky question, Blake. The the second store and the construction and that whole process was not didn't feel like it went as smoothly as the first. Um, okay. So we had some challenges and delays that that were frustrating. But um, um, but the second time around, you you you, you know, I knew, knew a lot more of what I needed to do and to get up and running and purchasing things and stuff like that. You could gain some experience and, but it, it's r- really the critical. The critical component uh, uh this franchise is finding the right team. And, you know, from up ma- management down to the swim instructors, it's it, it, it's it's a moving piece, you know, if you will. Right. Like it's right. constantly evolving and you kind of got to form and make sure that you got the right uh, um, the right team in place. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, that's a lot of moving parts, right? And as you mentioned in the first episode, the, I mean, the service that you provide is, you know, literally helping to save kids' lives, right? So that uh, kids can survive on their own if they fall into the water. So, I mean, you're not just talking about any old regular employee. You're talking about a dedicated team of people. Yep. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say, Blake, is we do all our lifeguard, uh, the, the dedicated team. Um, what sets us apart as a brand is um, we hold ourselves to a higher standard than a lot of pools, and um, we 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 do uh, lifeguard training in house. And I require really? I require a majority, almost all of my employees, to get lifeguard certified. So if if there was something to happen that I had enough people that knew what to do to um, God forbid something happened in, in the pool, but um, we, we do monthly in services with you know like work, working on lifeguard skills and stuff like that. We we take it very seriously. You'll never see in my pool um, a lifeguard not on duty at, at, at all times. I, and I've been in your facility, and I would agree with you. So that brings to light something else. So, you know, one of the benefits that you hope you get when you're uh, a multi-location owner within that franchise system is being able to leverage some economies of scale. So when it comes to staff or training programs, is that an example of something where uh, you can leverage the capabilities of both locations to the advantage of both? Absolutely. So we just held lifeguard training, I think January 2nd, and we had 10 people, uh, Go through training, and it was a it was a blend of it um, for, from each store. So you know, we we can run the trainings more frequently, and we can leverage both stores to schedule those trainings. And at, bo- at both facilities, I have staff that can certify um, certify lifeguards. Yeah, and if you got a gap, I imagine part of what you're doing is they could work at either location. So I mean, we're in a labor crunch right now, right? Everybody yeah, that's that. uh, that's been a critical. Um, piece where you know kid, kid, uh, kids that want to pick up more hours or uh, we're shorthanded at this pool as opposed to the other pool kids can go back and forth there's definitely and then on, on the marketing side uh, like clearly uh, the dollars go a lot farther because you're splitting it between two stores right yeah yeah good point were there resources internal to the franchise system uh that that helped you as you were expanding into a second location. So lessons learned, et cetera, whether it was from other franchisees or the franchise or themselves. Yeah, absolutely. The franchise or has been great. Um, the whole way through, uh, they have a dedicated team. They have an operations consultant. We have marketing, uh, consultants that have been, you know, working with me as soon as we signed the franchise agreement. Um, you know, and once we found the location that the, their hands-on support has been, is n- nothing but spectacular. Oh, that's great to hear. It sounds like you have a really good relationship with your franchisor. Yeah, they're fantastic people. That's the rabbit hole I spoke of earlier, Blake. It's like I, not knowing what I'm doing, and I went uh, to Detroit to meet them all, and I'm like, these people are really, really nice. They're genuinely like great people, and I, I want to do business with them. So uh, it's been it's been a great partnership, um, and they treat they treat their fr- franchisees like family, and um, it's it's just been a great experience. That's good to hear. And then. Obviously, the access you know within the community, we have you know I can I can get on the phone and call any other owner and say, hey, this is bothering me. Have you ever experienced that? And the resources are endless for us. Glad to hear that. So, what's the long game for you? You see yourself opening more of these up? 
Uh, Blake, we, we, we let's take one step at a time here. I mean, we just opened uh, 30, 34 days ago our second store. and um, but, Well, yeah, but I was inferring that you hadn't even opened yet. So all of a sudden during this podcast, you've already fast-forwarded a couple of months. I mean, come on. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Um, yeah, I mean, in franchising, that's kind of, you know, you get the economies of scale and um, but you, you know, again, it's finding the right people to help you grow that. And, um, you know, I, and I, here in Omaha, the first store, I felt comfortable with the leadership that I had in place that I was ready to move forward. And it's what, what is that next step and what, where, where, who are the key, key people and where is that going and how we can expand up. Uh, but yeah, you're always looking for opportunities to grow, mm-hmm. whether it's this brand, you know, it's a, it's a very family friendly brand. So I, I feel like I could probably get into other family friend, friendly products, but um, for right now, we're just work, focusing on the second store in Papillion. Makes sense. Makes sense. So any, as far as the actual application of the services, um, providing the service to the customers, anything that you learned from the first one that you're immediately applying at the second one? Best practices, per se? Well, yeah, Blake, uh, Omaha is an interesting market. Um, <laughs> it, it's a whole bunch of little parts of town that all think they're separate cities, right? Yeah, but in you know, I, I, the one thing I would say I underestimate on the first one is bringing a new brand to a, a, a new market, um, but um, has some challenges um, because nobody knows who you are in town uh, right away, and I, I learned that really fast in Omaha. Omaha is a great town, but uh, you know, I, it, it really resonated with me about six months in, and uh, you know, the the growth numbers for us weren't, weren't what I anticipated, and it's like. Um, I've I've done a lot of community outreach, and it's I, I know how many kids have been through my facility, and still I'll go places people don't know who we are. So it's um, it, 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 it it's a cautionary that new yeah. to market you gotta uh, you 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 got you gotta bring the awareness of what it is you're um, providing. And so the upshot of that is you're gonna have to be a little bit more patient. You're gonna have to mes- invest more time in marketing and awareness before the customers start coming in. No, uh, that was the first one. Second one, now we have the name recognition, and uh, we have uh, you know a lot of excited people that we brought one to Sarpy County um, yeah. because um, we had, we have we had a lot of clients that would travel twenty, thirty, forty minutes to our, our for our services, right? Um, and now having the convenience of one in their backyard, I think is uh, it's going to be a uh, added um, bonus, and I think um, yeah, it's um, so. The second one coming to market, it's I, I feel more comfortable that the brand awareness is is much stronger than on the first one. Sounds like the investment of the time and financial resources in building that brand with the first one is working to the advantage of the second location. Yep, absolutely. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you, Blake. Yeah. What else should somebody know if they're – thinking about being a multi-unit or multi-territory owner within a franchise system, or they're in the process of doing that right now. Any advice that you would give somebody in those shoes right now? Um, the number one advice is I would research your franch- the franchise opportunity. Um, not all franchises are, are the same caliber. Um, and, you know, I, it was a lot of back and forth on wh- what ro- road I wanted to go and do. But, um, you know, I... As I said previously, the brand has been fantastic to work with, and I, you know, um, I, I, I just do your research on who the franchise or are and what kind of support they're going to provide, or at least know the expectations of so you're not disappointed. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe even talk to a few of their existing franchisees, right? And any anyone that's not transparent or allowing you access to that, um, I would just run. I'd run the other way. Thank I, you, sir. I want. I, I, I want. I, I want Every every owners and everyone I talked to was an open book in this brand, and it just gave me the comfort and confidence of what I was getting into. Yeah, um, so. I I never would own the franchise I own if I, I hadn't heard the same thing. Totally agree with you. Yeah. So, last question for you, if you don't mind. So, any mentors or advisors in your professional life that have had a big impact? Um. I, I, yeah, I mean, I've I've had a few. Um, I would say my grandfather-in-law is uh, he's ninety-five years old, and he's built uh, a lot of great businesses. And you know, ha- had to drop out of school at a young age because um, uh, his father passed away. Um, but he he built a nice um, 
business and, you know, and talking to him over the years and, um, he's kind of, kind of guided me a lot, a lot of my uh, wife's family. Um, they, they can, they're all entrepreneurs and kind of gave me the itch to go that route. And I've had, I've had a, some interviews with, or with some various people when I was looking for something to do. And everyone that I spoke to was like, your personality, you can't work for someone that's not in your nature. So <laughs> I didn't realize at the time, you know, applying for jobs that I probably hate and be miserable at. And it, it just really clicked at, at kind of the time I was looking to go into something else um, that I, I, I enjoy doing my own thing and uh, watching, you know, putting putting together the financing, but also putting together the teams. Like that, that, that has been the most gratifying. I've seen some amazing growth in some of my team members that I never – thought they had the capability and that that's what i'm most proud of that they can believe in themselves and and, and grow beyond even maybe maybe their own expectations at that time so sounds like you're paying it forward from what your uh grandfather-in-law provided to you absolutely blake <laughs> rj thank you very much for spending some time with us for for both of the episodes i appreciate it. and one more time so folks want to get a hold of or they're interested in being a customer of goldfish swimsuit I did it again. Goldfish Swim School. My apologies. How how best to get a hold of your team? Our, um, go, go on our website or call us. Um, goldfishswimschool.com. Our first store is West Omaha, and our second store is Sarpy County. Um, you can find them on Google real easy, and I don't have the phone numbers at the top of my head. Uh, that's okay. off, Nobody but, calls the phone anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our website, you can contact us and fill out a form or, you know, if you got questions. So Great. Thank you. I appreciate you volunteering your time for both episodes and sharing your experiences, some really unique experiences. So thanks for your openness on that. Thanks, Blake. Have a so, great day. You too. And thanks to everybody for listening to another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guy. Remember, you can always scan that QR code if you've got any questions or you want to get a hold of RJ or Goldfish Swim School. Uh, we're happy to get you in touch with them, and you'll get all of our contact info from that QR code. And don't keep us a secret, right? Uh, share, follow, and subscribe. We want to make sure that any content you see that's going to help somebody you know and care about can be forwarded on to them. So thank you again for joining us today, and we'll see you again soon on another episode of the Heartland Franchise Guide.